everyone. Today we're going to be talking about peer pressure refusal techniques. And specifically, we're going to talk about positive and negative peer pressure. But before we begin, let's do a little bit of review. So last time we talked about effective communication. So what does that look like? Well, we want to have a listener and a speaker. And the listener job is to make sure they're understanding the message that the speaker is giving, right? The listener wants to make sure that they're giving the speaker eye contact, that they're leaning in to let the speaker know that they're fully listening and they're fully trying to understand. And if they don't understand, they want to ask those clarifying questions, right? The speaker wants to make sure that they're speaking up, that they have eye contact with the listener, okay? And they also want to make sure that they are sending the message in a clear way, right? So they want to make sure that the listener is fully understanding them by making sure that they're going to stay on topic, right? They don't want to be distracted and not really send the message out to the listener and have the listener be confused. So the speaker must stay on topic so that the message is understood by the listener. And we also talked about friendship, right? So what are those qualities that make a good friend? Well, we want a friend that's forgiving. We want a friend that's trustworthy. We want friends who are encouraging, who are supportive, who are honest and caring, who are fun. I love friends that make me laugh, but those are good friends, right? We also want friends that are respectful and patient, okay? So when we look for friendship qualities, we wanna make sure that those qualities are strong, healthy qualities, right? To have a healthy friendship. So now what we're gonna talk about is how to manage our friendships and avoid situations that could get us into trouble, okay? So let's go ahead and jump into that. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to read you a little story called House Swarming Party, okay? We're going to go ahead and follow a boy named Calvin and his friends. So let's go ahead and get started. So Calvin says, Mom, can I go to the park with Ted and Andy? Calvin's mom says, Yes, as long as you're home by noon. We have to go to your brother's baseball game. The friends had two hours to play basketball, so they headed to the park. Ted says, hey, let's stop at the old abandoned house first. Andy says, yeah, I bet there's all kinds of creepy crawlies inside. Calvin says, uh, my mom always told me to stay away from there. Ted says, come on, we're just going exploring. What could possibly go wrong? Andy says, I bet you're afraid of ghosts. Calvin knew his parents trusted him to do the right thing. Ted says, look over there. There's the house and it has a broken window. Andy says, awesome, let's climb inside. Calvin says, I don't think we should. Let's just go to the park like we planned. Andy says, you're such a scaredy cat. Ted says, yeah, wait till everyone at school hears what a scaredy cat you are. Calvin says, I'm not a scaredy cat. Andy says, then prove it. You lead the way. Calvin stood on the sidewalk staring at the house as he thought about what to do. He knows he should listen to his parents, but if he doesn't go in, Ted and Andy will tell everyone he's a scaredy cat. Ted says, forget it, Andy. Let's go without him. Andy says, see you later, scaredy cat. Calvin stood there for another moment. Wait up, guys, I'm coming. Ted and Andy lifted Calvin up to climb through the window. He was halfway through when he heard a buzzing sound. It got louder and louder. Suddenly, Calvin yelled, bees. Andy said to Ted, what did he say? Ted said, I don't know, something about trees? Calvin said, quick, help me down. Calvin didn't get down fast enough. The swarm of bees attacked. Teddy, 
or Ted and Andy took off running, leaving him behind. Calvin returned home before noon, but his family couldn't go to his brother's baseball game. They had to take Calvin to the hospital instead. Later, Calvin was grounded for disobeying his parents and going to the old abandoned house. So let's talk about this for a minute. Who is responsible for Calvin getting in trouble? There's a few different answers here that you could come up with, but there's a definite answer. So Calvin, his friends, possibly his mom. Well, actually, Calvin is the one who's responsible for getting into trouble, right? Because he made that decision. What decision did Calvin make that led him to get into trouble? Well, he decided to go along with his friends and go into the bandit house. What do we call it if friends or classmates pressure you to do something you do not want to do or something you shouldn't be doing? Well, that's what we're going to focus on today. So that is called peer pressure. In this case, this is negative peer pressure. This was something that was irresponsible. So your peers are a friend or somebody who's your own age. Could be a classmate or neighbor that's the same age. Calvin's friends used negative peer pressure and Calvin allowed it to influence his decision to go into the abandoned old house. So what were the consequences of Calvin's decisions? Well, he got stung by a swarm of bees. His parents were disappointed in him. His family didn't go to the baseball game because they had to take him to the hospital. So again, Calvin is the one who's responsible for his decision. So who is responsible for the decisions you make? Right, you are, okay? We are responsible for our own decisions. So let's take a closer look on how negative peer pressure can influence a person's decision so you can learn how to refuse it. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and take a closer look at how negative peer pressure can influence a person's decision so we can learn how to refuse that negative peer pressure. So we're gonna listen carefully and we are going to identify what the friend says to pressure the other person, okay? So here we go, here's a first example. Why are you running for student council, asked Jay. Because I want to make a difference at school, said Sophia. Only goobers run for student council, said Hank. He's right, said Jay. You don't want to waste your time on that. I think it will be fun, Sophia replied. People will think you are a nerd, said Hank. Yeah? You don't want everyone to think you're a nerd, said Jay. Fine, I won't run, said Sophia. So what did Sophia's friends say to influence her decision not to run for student council? Think about that. So what did Sophia's friends say to her to influence her decision to run for student council or not? Well, Hank said, only goobers run for student council. People will think you're a nerd. So that pressured Sophia to think that she should not run for student council. So what did Jay say to pressure Sophia not to run for student council? You don't want to waste your time on that. Yeah, you don't want everyone to think you're a nerd. So again, her friend Jay was making her feel terrible about running for student council as well. They are saying that if she runs for student council, she's going to be looked at as a nerd. So both Jay and Hank made Sophia feel bad about her running for student council by making fun of the idea. So did this peer pressure work? It did, right? Because it influenced, it 
made Sophia, she allowed it to make her not run for student council. So do you think Sophia will regret her decision that she did not run for student council? Well, yeah, probably because she was really interested in running for student council. She thought it would be fun. But now she's going to miss out on that great opportunity. Sophia let Jay and Hank make her decision for her. She allowed their opinion to influence her decision. So let's read another scenario. The phone rings just as David starts working on his chores. I'll get it, yells David. Hey, what are you doing, asks Tom. My chores, said David. Come outside for a snowball fight, said Tom. I have to finish my chores first, said David. Just lie and tell your mom you're done, said Tom. I can't, said David. Come on, you'll be the only kid in the neighborhood who isn't in the snowball fight. I'm counting on you, said Tom. I guess I can lie just this once, said David. See you outside in five minutes, Tom said as he hung up the phone. Mom, I finished my chores and I'm going outside for a snowball fight, yelled David. So, what influenced David's decision to lie to his mom? So, what did Tom say to David, in other words? Well, Tom said, just lie and tell your mom you're done. Come on, you'll be the only kid in the neighborhood who isn't in the snowball fight. I'm counting on you. So that's what influenced David to lie to his mom. So he allowed peer pressure to influence his decision. What do you think will happen when his mom finds out he lied and did not finish his chores? Well, his mom's gonna be angry and upset with him. She might not trust him anymore. David gave control of his decision making to Tom. Who should be in control of David's decisions? David, right? You are responsible for making your own decisions. No matter what your friends say, make the decision you know is right for you, not for your friend. So now we're going to go ahead and get into the specific refusal strategies. So what is a strategy? Well, a strategy is a plan, right? An action plan. We all have to face peer pressure, but there are many good strategies to help you resist it. So now we're going to look at the peer pressure refusal strategy poster. Okay class, so now let's go ahead and go over this poster here. This poster is showing you six different refusal techniques or strategies, right, to use to help you refuse peer pressure. So remember, a strategy is an action plan. The first strategy here is simply to say no. You can say it like no, no thanks, or no way, okay? When you refuse peer pressure, you want to be confident. Who remembers how to speak with confidence. I hope you all do, right? We talked about that with effective communication. So we want to make sure that we speak up, use a firm tone of voice, and look the person in the eye. We also want to be sure to stand tall to show that you are confident in refusing the pressure. So what could possibly happen if you don't refuse the pressure confidently? Well, the person pressuring you might not take you seriously, and they could pressure you even more. So the next strategy here says walk away. So this is where you're going to think of a safe place to go to and start walking there. Don't hang around, right? We want to leave the situation as quickly as possible. If you were pressured in the hallway at school, think about a safe place you could walk to. Well, you could walk to the classroom, the office, or where your friends are. Awesome. 
So now the next strategy is where we're going to ignore. This might seem rude, but it's not. If somebody's pressuring you to do something irresponsible or something that's unsafe, this is a good strategy to use to simply just ignore that person, to not pay attention to the person who is pressuring you, to not look at that person in the eyes, right? We want to pretend that that person is not even there. Okay, the next one here says make an excuse. We want to use an excuse to get out of the situation. And I want to make this very clear. This strategy is not telling us to lie. We're not lying here. We're just coming up with another um, another excuse, rather another activity that we could potentially do instead of what our friend is asking us to do. So for example here, you could tell them you have other plans, have homework to do, or you have chores to do. Again, this is not lying. Um, or instead, you could come up with a believable excuse. I can't. I have to go home and study for the test tomorrow. Well, you really do have a test tomorrow. So you're going to choose to study instead of do what your friend is asking you to do. Or you could say, my mom told me to come straight home because my grandparents are coming over. Those are good excuses to get out of that peer pressure. The next strategy is a good one as well to use if the person pressuring you is your friend. A better idea gives you the chance to suggest something else to do. Replace the negative activity with something positive like playing basketball, riding bikes, watching a movie, getting a snack, or playing video games. Think of a safe, healthy, fun activity you and your friend can do. So I want you to practice right now. I want you to imagine I'm your friend and I say to you, come on, just steal that basketball from your neighbor's yard. No one will notice. So right now I want you to think how you could refuse that pressure using a better idea. Remember to speak with confidence. So think about that for a moment. What could you say to me if I were your friend and I say, come on, just steal that basketball from your neighbor's yard? No one will notice. And I want you to practice using a better idea. Well, you could say, let's go to the park instead. Let's go play bas basketball instead. Okay? And we don't have to steal the basketball. Or, I have a better idea, let's go get ice cream. Awesome. So the last strategy is a broken record. So we're going to repeat the same thing over and over. When you use the broken record, we repeat ourselves, okay? For example, if someone was pressuring you to cheat on a test, you would say, I don't cheat. If the person said you are a wimp, you would say, I don't cheat. Suppose the person uh, pressured, pressured you again by saying, if you were my friend, you would help me cheat on the test. You could say, again, I don't cheat. So if you stick with your line and say it enough, the person pressuring you will know you are serious and eventually they will give up. So these are the six peer pressure refusal strategies that I want you guys to not forget because as you grow older, you are going to face negative peer pressure, okay? And I want you to use these tools to help you refuse peer pressure. All right, so let's go ahead and practice these strategies. Just a reminder, who is your peer? Your peer is your friend, a classmate, a neighbor, someone who is the same age. I just wanted to throw that in there to remind you guys that I am not your peer. Your parents aren't your peer. Your teachers are not your peers. Okay, someone who is the same age as you. Okay, so today's lesson, we haven't really focused on positive peer pressure, but I just want to touch on it a little bit. 
because I think it's important to be aware that there's both positive and negative peer pressure. So an example of positive peer pressure would be your friend saying, hey, instead of playing video games after school like we usually do, how about we study for our math test tomorrow so we can both get awesome grades? That is an example of positive peer pressure. So now we're going to go ahead and look at two examples of negative peer pressure and let's walk through it and decide which refusal technique, which refusal strategy would work for each of these examples. So let's go ahead and look at those examples. So this one here shows you a friend is offering a friend a cigarette. And this picture kind of gives you a clue here what refusal technique he is using. So in the little talk bubble, he says no. So that is one strategy he could refuse this peer pressure, right? He could say, no, thank you. Smoking is unhealthy for you, especially children, okay? Or another strategy he could use he could also say, I have a better idea. Let's go grab some ice cream instead. Okay, so those are different ways where you can refuse negative peer pressure. Let's try another one. So this one here says, mind if I copy your work? Well, we know that's not the responsible thing to do, right? Your teacher wants to know what you think, not what your classmate thinks. So in this case, she could use the ignore strategy, right? She could pretend that she's not even hearing her classmate ask if she could copy her homework. She could also say, no, copying somebody else's work is not the responsible thing to do. She could also make an excuse and the excuse could be, I'm not too sure. I'm not, um, I'm not confident with my answers. You don't wanna uh, copy my work, right? Okay, so you can use any of these strategies for any type of negative peer pressure that you face. So sometimes your friends may choose to do something that isn't safe or healthy. So I want you to remember these peer pressure refusal strategies because they will help you make healthy choices and keep you out of trouble. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to have a trusted adult email us at scazaprevention at gmail.com and we would love to hear from you and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. So you guys enjoy the rest of your day and remember these peer pressure refusal strategies. They will help you along the way. All right. Have a good day.